give a, an overview of some <coughs> my personal theory of non-computer gravity and apply it to uh, the Newtonian approximation. This is work done mainly by Claudia Burrich, with the participation of some two great science mathematics. So I'll give a general introduction in motivation, first of all. And then the general theory of uh, I see non-computer geometry and gravity. Varies a little bit from the, the, the uh, mini group, relies heavily on the non commuted version of the Carton moving frame formula. And at the end, I'll give a, a general linear approximation that can be solved explicitly, and then the Newtonian approximation as an example. Well, here's something I guess is sort of rather old is general motivation of high five people that should do this sort of thing. Uh, what I would like to try to point out is what I think is that gravity is sort of the field, but when one quantizes something, one has a field and stated incorrectly but sort of intuitively is I think gravity is the field one obtains when one quantizes the coordinates. That's the sort of so I'd like to have a very intimate relation between non-human gravity, non-human geometry and gravity, that is to have them be the two aspects of the same thing. That is, if one has a non-human manifold, non-human geometry is necessarily curved, and if one has a curved manifold, it's necessarily non-human. Now, of course, there's an easy example, common example of this is the one which has been often pointed out here is the coordinates that commute to theta constant, which according to my point of view is, is non-commutative but flat. So there's a counterexample of that. But I think this is the only counterexample and it has to do with it's sort of a degenerate case. Which, something, I don't know exactly what the status is, but it, it doesn't degenerate limit. So physics here, of course, so I have to admit it. In order any theory of Energy of physics, one always has a cutoff, and so points cannot be defined uh, explicitly. So the idea of non commutative geometry is to make this more or less explicit this, this cutoff, that is part of the intimate part of the theory. So when you think of the cutoff as a, as, a, as, a, as a practical device for making things regular, or as a fundamental thing in, in which the, there is a fundamental length scale in which one, one cannot probe beyond, beyond which one cannot probe. And this, this is part of the, 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 the essence of the manifold in which one's working, and it's intimately connected with the gravity which is defined on the theory. It's, this is an old idea due to Pauli way back in the 1950s that gravity is the ultimate regulator of particle physics. So, this regularization in this theory would go through the fact that. Gravity is equivalent to non commutative geometry and the non commutative geometry regularizes. Now, the solid state, there's a lot of solid state analogy with all this. In fact, there's a lot of these ideas go back to Wheeler. The idea of a phonon, gravity is a phonon, there's a fundamental lattice, and the gravity is the phonon which is associated with that lattice. But the new idea here is, well, new idea, an idea was even Later was that this lattice can be made invariant in a certain respect if one uses non commutative coordinates. That's an idea to design it. A lot of other related things. Well, this is induced gravity, lattice, random lattice, and this, and whatnot, which are closely related to these ideas. So the idea is to replace non commutative Minkowski coordinates by generators of a non commuted algebra that is I write down x new and x new is commutator. Of course, this commutation relates to do not define an algebra. One needs a representation. This commutation relates to partially define the algebra, but one needs an explicit representation that operates on some Hilbert space in order to really define the algebra. One way of doing this is using a star product, but it's not the only way. And everything I've done here. It does not depend on the representation. It's more or, less, more or less associated with the algebra and more or less independent of the representation. 
Well, this is the standard philosophy, I guess, that the Heisenberg has certain relations to points replaced by fuzzy region of space. And the, uh, the idea is that just based on the previous study was based on the following analogy here is that there's an algebra which depends on some length scale, which I call capital bar, k bar. There's a differential calculus over this algebra. The differential calculus is very important. Uh, mostly, when it uses these cases in, in, a, in, a sense, in, a way, in conditions which there is, there is a group acting on it, for example, Harold has several examples in which the, this, this morning, which there was a uh, either an SO3 or a U1 plus U1 group. If this group can partially replace the differential calculus, but when there's no group action, one needs a differential calculus in order to, to define the, 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 uh, the, the, the gravity. So the gravity is equivalent to the differential calculus over the algebra. Of course, the algebra, the difference of calculus in particular defines the algebra, and the algebra defines the cutoff. So this is the idea of all these in the 50s, that the gravity is the cutoff. <coughs> now, the classical Cartan formalism is a, the idea is there's a moving frame. I use car computation theta and the, der the associated derivation of E, which we dual one to another. In the ordinary geometry, flat geometry, theta would be dx and E would be d by dx. So they're dual to one another. There's a steady connection, it's also called a rich rotation coefficient, which I know as C, and it, it, that connects the, see the d theta i is a two form. So the, this d theta i can be written in terms of the arbitrary two forms, which is the product of two one forms, using these coefficients. And the commutation relations between the derivations is given in terms of this, this uh, coefficients here. Now the problem is with this commutation relation here in the, in the non commutative case, is the left hand side is a derivation, but the right hand side is no longer a derivation. So this is not a very good way of expressing things, and it's much better to use the forms. There's also, in uh, the case, formalism <coughs> have there's a naturally induced uh, gauge condition, which is this one here, but it, it appeared quite naturally. But all the, the expressions I have, which are limits, the non cumulative theory have to satisfy this gauge condition. Now, I've never been able to explicitly relate this, but I, I'm quite sure this has nothing to do with the Petrov classification. I have a, a non-cumulative algebra and associate differential calculus. My idea is that it's not clear, well, the, first of all, the, the non cumulative algebra defines a symplectic form in the limit, commutative limit. It also de defines me a metric. The metric defines me a curvature. And then, according to Petrov classification, this curvature has these four null vectors. That is the, at least the, uh, the formal part of it. And the symplectic part also has null vectors. So there must be some intimate relation, obviously, I think, between the null vectors coming from the symplectic geometry and the null vectors coming from the Riemann tensor. But I've never quite been able to do this. That is, in certain cases, it <coughs> appears quite naturally, but in other cases, it's not, I have no general prescription of how to, to do this. The most natural way things to work with are the, the, the type 2, the type D, I guess, the um, vector classification, in which there are two null vectors which coincide to the Riemann tensor, two double null vectors. In that case, if you have two null vectors to the Riemann tensor and two null vectors from a non degenerate symplectic form, then it would be quite natural to identify this. this. But in other cases, it's not where I was going to do. But what I do is take these derivations and sort of quantize them, make this derivation inner. Now, if you have any algebra and derivations of an algebra, you can always make them inner by adding the appropriate elements to make them inner. And these are called momentum. 
And these momenta are more or less identical to the mini group called covariant coordinates. I think they're almost the same. And our limit, the possible essential extension is, now here's a, an example of what I mean. I have R4 with ordinary, the, the D, this is R4 plus R4, and the theta i's are just the d's of the coordinates, and the ej's are just the ordinary d's. So the computation relations are just that the eg, well, these two things commute. So the algebra, the, al the law that I impose on the algebra is that the associated momentum commute modulo a central extension. That is, I have this rule at the bottom here, this one here. This is what I call the flat geometry, because it's just a central extension there. And the momentum commute to this central extension. And then I can write the momentum, if I assume this is this this object is non-degenerate, I can write the momentum in terms of the of the uh, 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 commutation relations in, in the algebra, such as the momentum are given by this this Fourier transform between the out and the position operators to momentum algebras. And so I have these, all, all everything here is, 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 is tightly integrated together. I have a momentum pi and the position of the xi and the Fourier transfer between the two. And this is an example of a flat geometry because these, my frame, to start with, are they're, they're, the forms which define the frame are um, exact forms. So this is a, 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 a counter example of my idea that non-tutor geometry and curvature are the same thing. Here's an example of a, of a, of a theory which is not commuted in, in a trivial sense, but has a flat geometry according to my definition. I think I have some more, more details for that. When you see this, there's a dictionary between the So I also have to have these, the geometries have to be parallelizable, the limit geometry has to be parallelizable because I have a global moving frame, which means parallelizability. Of course, the fuzzy sphere, for example, is not parallelizable. You need to get around this by lifting the frame to the, 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 the frame bundle, or just a smaller bundle. So if you don't, you have several parallelizable manifold, what you have to do is lift non parallelizable you have to lift that frame to the, to the frame bundle, get a parallelizable geometry, and then you have a fuzzy Klein type geometry in the end. For example, fuzzy sphere is, is a, really a geometry of a U1 bundle over the sphere. It's a fuzzy Klein model. So here I have an algebra, star algebra, a calculus. This, of course, a star algebra is not, that, that's not a star product, this is a evolution, the differential calculus, and I impose that the U1, the one forms, be a free module over the algebra. This means that the, I can identify the one forms with its components. And implicitly, this is what was done, for example, in the previous talk. The person the turn Simons with the turn Simons with three form, he identified the three form with the with the components, which implies that he has used this 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 uh, this basis. So the frame here is, now I have a, these one forms of the frame and these are dual the derivations which are inner. But inner is an insistent, that not under restriction because if I have a, outer derivations, I always make an inner by adding the appropriate, appropriate extra elements. This is what I mean by inner derivations to add. The dictionary with quantum mechanics is like it follows. PI are the operators of quantum mechanics with, with normalized by the one h bar, the zeta i's are the dx's, and these things are just the, the ordinary dual duality between the momentum and the and the uh, uh, position in quantum mechanics. And you see, if, if this this is quantum mechanics on the flat on the right here on the flat on the flat space, but this could be curved if instead of having this, I had instead of this being delta, it was equal to some of these. What I have on the left-hand side is, 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 is an object here with an element of the algebra, which, which is 
non, not, not, not a, a scalar. Is this an arbitrary element of the algorithm? Then this is quantum mechanics on the curved series. Now, if it is true that this symplectic form is non-degenerate, then the position space and the, and the momentum space are about one space, because I can define the momentum in terms of this, the, the Fourier transform allows me to define the momentum in terms of the, <coughs> the, the position coordinates. So the Fourier transform is a mapping of the space into itself, and the, uh, the position operators and the, and the momentum operators are the same. So they sort of do the, the relative operators. So the algebra is just, this is fate, really phase space, phase space. If the algebra, the symplectic form of K is, is degenerate, then I have to add in more, more elements. And in the limit, if I have no symplectic form there, then I have to add in four more elements, four more momentum, and I have something resembling a more a traditional phase space. Now, in general, what the dimension of the non commutative geometry is rather a delicate question, and my answer in this particular case, when the module is, is modular to free module, is that I find the dimension to be the rank of this. Now, for example, in the a simple example, like the command and plane, which has two, two generators, one can form non commutative geometries of any dimension over this, this, uh, this algebra, any 15, 20, 100, whatever you wish. But it's only those which are two dimensions which have a nice limit. The other ones have a single limit. But there are relative conditions which, which I also not uh, well. Well, here's the constraint equation. Now, if you write down what I've just written down, and look at the condition that the that the let me show you that before. Okay. I have the condition that I have a frame F theta I theta I F. Well, let me put this, this is equal to zero. If this, is, this is a relation in the algebra in the one forms, so it's a relation in the two forms, I have to have the d of that is equal, also equal to zero. That's a very strong condition, and interpreted in terms of momentum means that the Momentum must satisfy quadratic algebra. And, and this quadratic algebra has three particular cases which Maria wrote down. And this is the most general case written down up here. This is the general case that incorporates the particular case she mentioned. It's the, it's the ordinary central extension with just the k and m is vanishing, and then there's the Lie algebra type, which is linear, and then there's the properly quadratic algebra, which is the, 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 the third term. So this condition that the, that the frame commute with the elements of the algebra is a very strong condition and imposes this very rigid relation on the, on the momentum <coughs> social momentum. These are the covariant coordinates that repeat. This can be written down in terms of the, 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 um, the rich rotation coefficient in this form here. Now, the reason why these rich rotation rates are related to this is to the fact that the, I impose that the connection, the, 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 the covariant derivative, the, uh, the uh, bi, bi module covariant derivative, that is, they have a left Leibniz rule and a right Leibniz rule. It's also a very strong condition, and it's the relation that, which is, is not obvious here in this slide, which is the relation which gives me my, my rich rotation coefficients in terms of the the, the, these quadratic terms. See, this is gravity on Earth. This last term is gravity. This is sort of a, well, this could be also considered gravity, but only on the constant curvature. And this is flat, constant curvature, and varying gravity. 
So in, in the limit, this, this of course is constraint equation, in the, the general limit just means that the momentum commutes. So in general, it's a, it's a more, sort of a more general. Well, this is our data here. According to the general formalism, is this Q here, which is symmetric, uh, the symmetric part here, and anti-symmetric in these two antithesis, means that my ratio equation of position has to be in this form, in order that the the associated coordinate for the ratio rotation coefficient, if I can form a connection, there's a standard back, back and forth between the connection and the ratio rotation coefficient, and from this connection I can form a covariant derivative, and I require this covariant derivative to have a Leibniz and a left Leibniz and a right Leibniz rule. How much time do I have? This is the left Leibniz rule, it's an ordinary Leibniz rule. I multiply the left from here, I have the, the bf times the theta i plus f times the covariant of theta i. This is also a right Leibniz rule, which is the following form. Which is in a, in a flat case, it's just an ordinary flip. So, covariant derivative is now a d and a sigma. And if you're interested in this sort of thing, there's, a, there's an interesting cohomological relation between the sigma and the d. But it's this couple which forms the covariant derivative. And this is a very stringent um, requirement. This, this map here, that virtually in each case, he finds the the covariant derivative in terms of the, this, this algebra here. So this is an important relation that gives my the C's in terms of the, that is, it permits you to define the quadratic algebra in terms of the ratio rotation coefficient. Well, in the linear approximation, this is right down all this explicitly. Linear, I mean that I retain only terms first order in the, in the perturbation, in the non commutivity which I call P-bar. So here I have my relation here, which defines the, the, the differential calculus. If I write this out in terms of, uh, this can always be written out in terms of uh, ordinary differentials, but something on the left here, or I, I could have written it on the right also, it would have been different. That means my coefficients between x, x and dxi are given explicitly in terms of the derivatives here, the derivations, which means that the, the commutation relations can be written in terms of, they have this differential equation here, which is, see this x lambda dx lambda is one term of the differential of the, the commutation relation, and using that I can find a differential in terms of the, I find a differential equation which gives me the, 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 the commutation relations are a solution to a differential equation. And this is the difference between here and the bottom here. This is the relation which is satisfied by me. Well, I'd like to apply that now to the Newtonian approximation. Everything is very clear and simple here. I'm sorry, that's just more garbage. <coughs> so, Newtonian, oh, so sorry, still more. Newtonian approximation is given by this. The frame is. It's, it, the frame is, is a simple frame. It's one half theta is here linearized. What we want is the square root of one minus five, which I approximate by one minus one half of five. So the, the, the frame, which defines the Newtonian approximation, the Newtonian potential, is, is theta zero. It's a simple multiply of et. 
and it stays like this. It also simply models a, a, a five of a different sign. Newtonian approximation is a classical approximation. I introduce this potentially, which is a partial derivative of phi. And then these, these, these one forms. And you do that, then you find that the, the frame satisfies this, this, this commutation of this differential here. D e theta zero is e theta zero, and D e theta i are minus A theta i. So I got the sign wrong here. So the rich rotation coefficients are given by the or the state connection is given by the simple uh, simple uh, I'll there and the duality relation between the between the, 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 the this is the frame, this is the this is the moving frame, that is the, this is the geometry, all the geometry and gravity is included here. This is the momentum. This is, this is, this is the Heisenberg uncertainty relation between momentum and, 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 and space time. The position operator and the momentum operator as modified by the gravitational field. So the algebra, the quadratic algebra, which defines the Newtonian approximations given here, and you write this out in terms of AI and PI, then I make an ansatz to show that AI is this ansatz is rather arbitrary. This is one simple, simple ansatz one can make. There's only one pi, so I might as well put ai in proportion to it. And then there's an extra p0, but I could probably, if I translation, you rid of that p0. That's, that's interesting. The algebra is defined by, finally by these commutation relations here. p0 and pi is the commutator. It's given in terms of the, on the right hand side. But it's the, it's simply, particularly the simple quadratic algebra. There's a, there's a Jacobian, uh, possibility of Jacobian anomaly, anomalies. As a matter of fact, there is a Jacobian anomaly. It is a Jacobian that is not satisfied unless this central extension is zero. So now I have a, a very particular, very strict relation now between the, the my algebra relation we give in terms of this. Where are we here? So my output relations are given right here in sum is for these case k is equal to zero. A very simple algebra. So the p0, the pi encodes the, that is the, this ai is the, the derivative of the Newtonian potential, it's the Christophe symbols more or less. <coughs> Christophe symbols are proportional to the momentum. That is the pi is, is an extra contribution to the momentum due to the gravitational So there should, so there should be a separation here between the, this is repetition of the pi. This is the pi xj, in this particular case, this is the, okay. so this, there's a line between this bracket here and the delta, between the bracket, the delta and the, and, the, and the bracket here. This should be separated. So this is the relation which we found in the general case, it shows that how the, Commutationalism from quantum mechanics, pi and xj are modified by this gravity Newtonian gravity. It's another, it's another relation which intrigues me between quantum mechanics and the curve manifold and non-linear geometry. Well, you can find as before the, explicitly the position the commutation relations just by solving this equation have a differential dji, a differential equation, dji is just dj mu nu is dx mu d nu. This is uh, another is tautology. I know what dx mu is in terms of the frame. When the frame comes out of this relation, and you conclude immediately that the differential equation which define the the, uh, the uh, commutation relations are just given by these, these simple relations here. And if I have a phi explicitly given, then I can define I'm explicitly with my commutation relations, but of course I have to have an explicit phi to, uh, well that's the bottom line, I mean, this, this, this example, one, one can explicitly find the commutation in terms of the Newtonian potential. 
Now, one disappointing fact for me is that I would have liked the plutonium potential to be forced to set aside the Ricci flat condition, that it would be harmonic, by the Jacobi relation, but this does not seem to be the case in this. There's been evidence, another example that shows that the Jacobi identities replaced the Ricci flat condition. That is, you didn't need to add, you didn't need to add field equations. The algebra itself divided the Jacobi identities, encoded, encoded the Ricci flatness. This does not seem, I haven't really finished with this yet, but this does not seem to be the case in this Newtonian isolation, which of course is a rather uh, fatal blow to this hypothesis. That's about all I have to say about it. Large distances such that one doesn't need dark matter? Um, yes, as a matter of fact, the, that's something I haven't quite exactly understood yet, but, but this, it turns out that this modification in small distance is in fact accompanied by a, a, an extra cosmological constant, which is not really a, well, it's not really a constant, but there's an additional term that allows it. There's a the work we did with, with, with George on this model that included with the Casper solution, which the Casper solution was modified at small distances and at large distances. So I haven't applied that to the, I had that idea not with dark matter, but with the rotation coefficient with the, in, in galaxies. There's a rotation, you know, this anomalous rotation curve in galaxies. But I haven't, we haven't worked that out yet. We've looked at the Casper solution as a time evolution, what we need for the rotation curve is something that resembling a Schwarzschild solution with a, with, a, with an R dependent. And we can find the same thing, then we can test this by the, with the rotation curve, uh, the galactic rotation curve. So the answer to your question is no, I haven't, but I just, just looked at something similar to that. That is, I'm thinking of looking at something similar. If you think of all this quantum business as an ultraviolet cutoff, sorry, if you, you think of all this quantum business is playing an ultraviolet cutoff to gravity. Yeah. Is there any chance that ultraviolet cutoff could be real low? Would like, be. could be very low order EVs so that you are actually uh, accounting for the dark energy, not the dark matter in some way? Maybe I can answer that question later. Um, I okay, other questions? Let's 